Hi, Todd here from Urban Sound Studio, and today we're taking a look at the ARP Odyssey. In this first of four videos, we'll be exploring the oscillators, the mixer, the amp, and the envelope sections. I'm using a full-size Rev2 edition. But the techniques apply whether you're using a different edition, the smaller key version, the Behringer version, or a desktop version. So let's jump on in and see how we can get started. To start, turn all your sliders down except for your VCF frequency and the ADSR sustain, which should be all the way up. Also, flip all of your switches to the up position. There are three sliders for our audio mixer. Let's turn up VCO1. Now turn up your VCA gain so that you have a constant drone even when not pressing a key. Press a note and use your coarse slider to find the correct pitch and the fine slider to tune it. Now let's turn up VCO2 and tune it to VCO1. Let's turn down the VCA gain and instead turn up the slider underneath so that a note only sounds when a key is pressed. Right now, the AR envelope affects the amp. The longer attack time will allow a note to swell. Lengthen the attack time even more. And a longer release allows a note to sustain after the key is released. Lengthen the release for more hold. Find a balance between the sliders to fit the sound you want. If you want more control over your envelope, flip the switch at the bottom from AR to ADSR. Attack and release can be set the same way, but you now have control over decay and sustain. Sustain determines the volume when a key is held. Try setting a short decay with sustain all the way down for a plucky sound. Adding a little release can make a more natural sounding pluck. The ARP layout does not follow a traditional signal flow. The oscillators are separate from the mixer, and typically the waveform is found in the oscillator section. We've been using a sawtooth on VCO1 and 2. We can flip a switch in the mixer to change the oscillator to square. You can now combine a square of VCO1 with a sawtooth of VCO2 to alter the timbre of your sound. There's also a third slider in the mixer that allows you to add white noise. The noise is the same no matter what key you press. Select pink noise with the flip of a switch. And if you flip the noise switch on the mixer, you can add ring mod instead of the noise which is perfect for cutting bases and leads.
But the real dramatic sound of ring mod comes when you start to detune one of the oscillators against the other. We can actually turn oscillator 2 all the way down and still get this effect. Let's go back to just our two oscillators and set them both to square. A common way to get a really fat sound is to slightly detune one of the oscillators against the other. And this is extremely common on bass sounds. We can use the transpose switch to jump down two octaves. we can add some portamento or glide between the notes. For a super fat bass sound, try putting your second oscillator up one octave. Mix and add some ring mod. Let's flip up to the original octave and explore another trick. Instead of a slight detuning, let's tune oscillator 2 to a completely different interval. We can now mix VCO2 underneath VCO1, similar to the way an organist uses the stops to mix intervals when performing. Experiment with different intervals. And those pads on the bottom left allow you to pitch bend based on how hard you press. And if you use the sine wave pad in the middle, you can add some vibrato. The speed of the vibrato is determined by the LFO frequency, and the depth of it is determined by how hard you press. Make sure to check out the next video in the series, where we will take a look at the modulation section, LFO, and the sample and hold mixer.